What's up everyone, Jordan here, and just getting ready to embark on a dull sheep expedition in the Brooks Range on Saturday, and it's currently Monday. So, final week, just trying to get everything um, finalized as far as prep goes, and I just thought I'd go through what I'm going to bring. So, first things first, just with some little, little stuff, obviously, the phone is going. Um, my tags are currently in this envelope, my locking tag, uh, but I need to, um, I'm going to take this whole thing and then whatever they tell me that I have to take or don't have to take, I'll break it down and put it inside this little zippered pocket here. I'll go inside my pack. Um, chapstick, super important, always have that in your pocket. Just a, uh, oops, a Benchmade folder, knife. Um, sunglasses. I just wear Oakleys. So those things are really important for a watch. A this is a Garmin Phoenix Six Sapphire watch. Um, this is an expensive watch with a lot of bells and whistles. Really, what I would recommend to people: get a good watch. And I really like having the altimeter on mine, so you can get like some Casio watches that are pretty dang cheap. But something to tell time is like very underrated, in my opinion. Um, okay, so clothing wise, for um, all you ladies, Nike sports bras are probably the only way to go. So um, bring one of those, of course. The First Light compression socks, these ones go over the calves and basically almost up to your knee. And I just really like these long socks. It helps with shin splints and things like that when you're hiking, so that's going to be good. Belt, this is the Argali, new Argali belt. It's pretty cool. The belt buckle doubles as a knife sharpener, so that's nice. Otherwise, it's a thin, really flexible knife. Um, fairly comfortable under a pack so far. You can tell it's, you can tell you have a belt on when it's under there, um, but that was with a lot of weight. So, um, so far it seems to, to be like a really good belt option. The first light, it's going to be an Arrow Wool Tech Tee. It's just a really lightweight merino wool t-shirt from first light. Bring that, and then the, uh, the first light, these are the Wick Long Boxers. Bring those. For pants, bring in the Corgit Foundry Pant from first light. These are their new new pants for 2021. I got to wear them last year in 2020 um, on Kodiak and Wyoming and Idaho and all over the place. Uh, reinforced seat and knees with knee pads, which are essential for these high alpine type hunts. And then you have hip vents for dumping a lot of heat at once, which is really nice. So super excited to wear these in the place that they were designed for. Um, just a basic ball cap and then really important in wet environments such as Alaska rain gear so the first light seek rain gear the pants and the jacket here I've gotten along really good with these on Kodiak last year and I've worn them before or a couple times on Kodiak now I guess um, extra well yeah extra clothing that I'm going to be packing with me. So I am bringing the Arrowwool Tech Tee, but I'm also bringing the Wick Tee, Merino uh, Wick Tee from First Light. It's a 125 weight Merino. It's a long sleeve with a hood, which can be really nice for glassing in the sun all the time. But I'm anticipating the hiking. I'll, I'll go with the t-shirt, but having two lightweight base layers like that, I think is going to be important on a trip like this. An extra sports bra. Extra pair of the Wiglon underwear, and then two extra pair of those compression socks. And also bring in the Wick zip off bottoms. So these are like a long john base layer essentially. They're three quarter length, however, so they go down to about mid calf. Um, so they're going to match up with the socks really well. Just cuts down on some weight. And then they are zip off, so you don't have to take your boots and your pants completely off to get them to get them off once it starts warming up. So bring in those as well. And these are just in a standard 
dry bag. It's kind of these dry bags are nice. Obviously, they keep things dry, and then they just keep things organized. I can pull the blue one out and be like, all right, these are my extra clothes. Toss it at camp and leave it. Um. Okay. So, along with the stuff that I'm going to be wearing, the pants and those t-shirts, um, the the rest of this clothing will be packed, fairly accessible in my pack. So this is a Ridgeline quarter zip, also from First Light. It's a synthetic layer. It's a really lightweight packable layer, for, like warmer but really windy days like on ridges hence the ridge line this thing is money to me um you know it might be a little extra for somebody to pack if they don't like it as well or to pack on a hunt like this but you know i took it with me on a scouting trip last week rolled up on a ridge and it got pretty damn cold pretty quick and I threw this thing on and I was glossing for a long time before I put like a, a puffy jacket on. So this thing is money to me and it folds up to about nothing. So I'm taking it. And then your standard grid fleece, this specific one's the Klamath from First Light, but just a grid fleece for like an intermediate layer is really, really money on a hunt like this. Layering is key on something like this. and. This is the stuff I'm taking with me to Alaska, but really, it did not take me long at all to pack it because it's like my typical Western kit. So, nothing really changed except for rain gear and just ditching some things, really. And I'll get to something that I changed up a little bit just for this hunt in a minute. So, footwear. We're in the Salewa Raven 3s. These are have been a really good burly boot, um, give you a really damn good platform in their stiff boot. These are all synthetic, there's no leather. A lot of guys like the leather boots, um, I like the synthetic, it's just personal preference probably. So I'm taking those along with the First Light Brambler Gators, Gators are super important on a hunt like this, such as this, so taking those. And then for camp shoes. Um, you know, some guys don't take camp shoes at all. A lot of guys like to take Crocs because they're super lightweight, cross rivers with them. They're comfy, comfy around camp and everything. I had some buddies uh, that went to the NWT a couple years ago and they all took running shoes with them. And they really like the versatility of the running shoes over Crocs, even though they might weigh just a tiny bit more. Um, so these are the uh, Solomon Speed Cross. I think these are the fives but they probably have a newer version now. But they're just a trail running shoe, lightweight trail running shoe, and I think that I'm gonna get along really well with those. So I'm taking them. And then, over the top of my grid fleece layer is another one that you could ditch depending on what you like. Um, a lot of guys I've noticed with, um, in sheep hunting, like other packing videos, they like to wear some kind of a vest. Typically it's like a soft shell type vest. Um, I'm going to bring a puffy vest. So this is just a uh, Brooks down vest from First Light. Super packable, really lightweight, uh, but a hell of a lot of warmth. So taking that with me. And then for my main puffy layer, my outer layer is going to be the First Light Uncompadre puffy jacket. This is synthetic insulation. Really important on a trip like this to really wet environments. So you have something in synthetic in my opinion over down and then I'll have the Uncompadre puffy pants to match that uh, to match the jacket so puffy pants you don't really realize how cold your legs get when you're sitting on a windy ridge or when it's you know later season in the US when it's cold um, I guess I should have mentioned we're expecting like 30 to 60 degree temperatures up there um, I'm anticipating quite a bit of wind with that and then just what I've been looking at the forecast. There's a lot of rain forecasted for the next week um, or couple weeks I should say. So if puffy pants are going to be nice then they're also going to add some extra you know temperature rating to my sleeping bag if I were to wear them in there. So that lets me cut down on what I'm taking for a sleeping bag which I'll get to in just a hot minute. Then uh, Tag Cuff Merino Beanie. These are the Shell Hybrid Gloves. These have a little bit more burly, like leather um, 
type material here on the palm so when you're grabbing onto things it's going to give you a little bit more protection on your hands. Um, places where there's going to be a shit ton of brush like just a straight up pair of leather gloves are really nice as well. And then these are just the uh, first like catalyst gloves like a mid-weight fleece lined glove that have been really great for me over the years. So start shifting here for a pack. For a pack, taking the Kafaru Duplex Light. This is a 24 inch frame. I'm roughly 5'10, and this is just a 24 inch composite stays. And yeah, it's a badass pack. I have a Nalgene bottle pocket here on one of the hip belts. Um, this is a marsupial. This is just like a cell phone holder or a little pocket that goes right here. Um, really great for a point and shoot camera like I'm going to bring. Honestly, I'm not sure if I'm going to bring that or not. Flipping it around, this is the doll bag. Uh, pretty large, it's like 6,800 cubic inches. Um, I added an X-Pack pocket here on the back. One cool thing about the doll bag is this is all X-Pack material, which is essentially waterproof. Um, until you get to the seams and then that's where you start losing waterproofness. Um, but this is going to be a great, great bag for Alaska. And then I added the guide lid, also an X-Pack on top of that. So that's going to be what's going to hold all this stuff. For a rifle, this is the Six Hour Cross in 6.5 Creedmoor. We just went out and shot it today. Um, I'm planning on being right in that 500 in in range with it, 450 hopefully in in range. Um, but we were shooting at 750 this morning and it was fantastic. So I topped it with a Sig Sour Whiskey 5, the 3 to 15, and yeah, just really a lot of, of awesome things to say about this rifle. I can fold the stock and have it be super low profile on my pack so I don't have, when I'm going through brush, you're not getting uh, your barrels not like hitting a bunch of stuff which is nice and um yeah and then bipod a lot of people some people have been telling me to leave the bipod because you have your pack but in my opinion a bipod is when you need it you're really going to need it and if i need to take a follow-up shot and like move a bit it's going to be harder to move a pack than it is to just move over with a bipod so taking the um, Spartan Precision. This is a Pro Hunt bipod. Um, it just folds down like so. Stick it in your pack, stick it in the side pocket of your pants, and then when you need it, you just pop it. Pop it on, and then you have an adjustable, really lightweight bipod. So, big fan of this and taking it. Um, just earplugs that just um, I can just wear them around my neck like that so they're easy easy to get to I'm going to bring two boxes of ammunition as far as just packing it up there there's two brand new boxes of the uh, elite series 140 grain um, 6.5 with uh, the nozzle acubond bullets and then trekking poles actually Yep, that's right. Trekking poles. These are the SNS Archery Backcountry Hunting Carbon Light Trekking Poles. I've been using these ever since they came out, like three years ago. Um, I believe 2018 was my first year with them. And they've just been a really great set of trekking poles for me. Um, this is something that I switched up a little bit just for this hunt. Typically, I bring, they call it a Thermarest Z seat. It's a little foam. Z seat, it folds up just like this, but it's smaller just for a seat. Um, with a hunt of this caliber and possibly for this long, I didn't want to, I wanted to have a little bit of dual purpose or redundancy on some things. So I bought this, it's just an Alps Mountaineering, I don't know what they call it, but it's just like a little Z foam pad. Um, I cut it down to where it's three quarter length of my body so I can sit on it have a little bit of extra room like when I'm sitting fold it in half have a little bit more padding 
But then if my sleeping pad were to go flat and I wasn't able to repair it or we were sleeping out on the mountain or something like that, I would have a pad with a little bit more insulation. So it's really lightweight. It's more bulky than anything. Um, but taking that and then a tarp, the Kafaru sheep tarp. This thing is really lightweight. It's just like a standard rectangular tarp. Um, I have four pegs that I can pitch it with and it pitches with my trekking poles. Um, I think that this is going to be, if we're going to be sitting, it's going to add a little bit more um, like shelter wise to camp um, for rain or whatever. It's just, it can be like an awning outside of the tent. It can be a standalone shelter if I need it. So taking that. Um, onto some of like, I guess, toiletry type things. Just standard toilet paper in a Ziploc. And uh, this little guy here is a Tinkle Bell for the girls. And it basically lets you pee standing up. And if you haven't listened to that podcast, go to Rockcast and listen to the women's only um, podcast with uh, Tanya and Leah. It was fantastic. So this is what I'm gonna have at camp, like my little like toiletry type kit. It's just in an extra small Kafaru pocket. A bunch of wet ones. This will be one for every day. Um, they come in a pack of two, but this will just be one here for a day. And just for like cleaning up the bod is gonna be nice. They're really lightweight. So those are just the singles. Those will go. And then this other little thing here. I've got extra hair ties, which is important for the ladies, and a small tooth toothpaste that's actually about half or two thirds of the way empty. And then this tooth Colgate toothbrush I got from Walmart that folds out. It's a little funky. I need to clean it, but it just folds in. It's like there's nothing to it, and. Um, I'm also going to take, I haven't added it yet, but just a little sliver of unscented um, deodorant. Gonna add that in there. And then, while we're going through kind of some essential stuff, this is a, a Little Essentials bag that has like first aid kit, some fire starting stuff, um, repair things, just some things like that. So it's just a small pull out from ultralight pull out from Kafaru. So triangle bandage. Um, I have a couple safety pins in there as well as a little thing of surgical glue. Um, a tiny little spray thingy of Neosporin. Um, this literally doesn't weigh anything and I just think it would be really nice for some antiseptic. You can also use wipes, but I had some wipes and I weighed these next to them and there's like no difference. So I just am taking the spray with me. Um, this is pretty much Luco tape, but the really cool thing about this, I got it on Amazon, is instead of the Luco tape coming in a big roll and then you happen to unroll it like onto a match container or something, this just has individual peels on the back so you can cut how much ever off you want um, but you're not going to lose any stickiness. So there's that. That's really good for taping your feet. I will pre-tape my feet before we even go on this trip. Um, another thing, a chapstick. Chapstick's so important. Um, a bottle of pills, which isn't as bad as it sounds. Um, I just have some antiviral in there, some mitol. Um, a couple of cough ones, if I get a cough, which does happen. Some Leave PM, Ibuprofen, and some Tylenol. So, that's just all going. This is, there's not really very much in there. Um, I have cotton balls in the bottom of that, which just seems why it filled the whole thing up. Um, some paracord that's kind of in a nest right now. But really good to take. Um, I do. I did bring, have some uh, power cords and charging cables and things for my phone, my InReach, my headlamp, and camera. So here's the charging cables for those. 
flagging tape is never a bad idea, just a little bit of that. Um, a few zip ties can be really handy for fixing things. This is a Light My Fire striker. This is some pyro putty, a small thing of pyro putty that is fire starter. Take that. Um, aqua tabs, MSR aqua tabs, important for some like emergency drink um, water treatment. Um, a big lighter, an extra CR2 battery for my range finder. This is called Tenacious Tape from a company called Gear Aid. It is a fabric tape, extremely sticky. Uh, we've, we patched two sleeping pads in Alaska um, a number of years ago with these things and they lasted the rest of the trip and they had big ass holes in them too. Um, this is just a tourniquet, kind of controversial to some people whether it's worth the wait or not. In my opinion, it is. I would like to come home if some, something were to happen. And then some Imodium and Excedrin for migraines. A extra, these are long burn matches in a waterproof match container. These are three AAA batteries that are extra batteries for my headlamp. Even though my headlamp is rechargeable, they can also take AAAs. So extra batteries for the headlamp, always a good thing. And then the Argali coal knife. They're our Argali carbon knife. Essentially just a fixed blade knife that's gonna go with me. Could take a replaceable blade. Um, there will be a few of us. The guide's gonna have like a whole slew of knives, uh, knives I'm sure. So I'm just taking one good um, fixed blade knife with me. So that is what's in there. That is gonna change with everybody and you just gotta take what you're what you're comfortable with, and yeah, go go from there pretty much. Try not to go too overboard, but but also you need what you need, and some of that stuff in there. Hopefully, you're not gonna need it, but if you need it, you're like really really gonna need it. So I'd rather I'd rather carry it, not need it, than be screwed back there. So that's going. Um, this is something I went back and forth on. The guides up there say they all just dip out of the streams and drink drink out of it with their water bottles. Um, some guys told me you can get into some sketchy situations, so a small microfilter might not be a bad idea. This is an MSR trail shot, just a microfilter. Put this in the water and you just squeeze the heck out of that and you can drink straight out of it or you can squeeze it into an algae bottle. Um, I was, I'm a big believer in the stair pin. For most every hunt here, I have a stair pin with an algae bottle. Um, but up there, I think if we were to get into some sketchy water that I would need the stair pin for, or really want the stair pin for, I'm going to want some kind of a pre-filter for the little bugs. So I'm bringing, bringing this. For my headlamp, this is the new Petzl Actic Core. This is a rechargeable headlamp. So the battery just pops out right there. That's the battery. You can plug, um, has a little micro USB plug. You plug it in and it charges it, but you can take this battery out and three AAAs pop into it. So it does lock. So it won't turn on your pack, hopefully. Um, this here is my inReach and GPS unit. I just happen to have one that's a dual. It's the Garmin um, 66i. Uh, I got it for a lot of the stuff here in the West. I wanted to be able to put an Onyx chip into if I needed to or have another source of maps. Um, but it is also an inReach unit and it looks heavier than it is. It's the same weight as like the standard inReach Explorer. So um, actually I think it's a little bit lighter than that. And then for charging all this stuff, like I've been talking about, bring in the Dark Energy Poseidon Pro charger. It's a 10,000 milliamp charger, and they've just been really good to me. So that's the one that I'm taking. And then I, I kind of had the option, you know, bring two of these 
or bring this in a solar panel. I'm going to choose to bring this in a solar panel because if I have two of these and they go down, they're worthless. But if I have one of these in a solar panel, I can recharge it. So the solar panel that I have, I bought last year from Amazon. It's a RAV Power. I think I bought it for like 50 bucks. And it's a 21 watt solar panel. It has three panels. Um, I'm not sure the weight on it. It's fairly light though for a panel and fairly small. So if we were to leave camp or as we're going from one place to the other, I can pop this out of my backpack, plug it into this battery pack and it's going to charge it. Um, before, you know, I would get these things down to three quarters of the way empty. And then when I would leave camp last year, I'd plug it in and when we left camp in the morning and there was a lot of sun, it was always charged when I came back. So that's pretty much the charge time I can tell people because I haven't exactly tested it through science. Um, bringing a camera, a lot of people are going to say skip the camera, skip carrying it, just take your cell phone. Um, I have had cell phones break before and then you don't have, um, you don't have like a memory card in it that you can take out and still salvage all the pictures and it's just a known fact that you can edit pictures better from a, a little camera than you can. Typically I am a videographer so I'd be taking a big camera, I'd be taking a whole bunch of camera equipment but since this is my hunt and I actually have a film crew coming with me um, I don't need to take any of that big stuff but I still want to have some kind of a camera with me so this is a, a Canon SX740 HS pretty reasonable camera as far as money goes and um, easy to use the screen flips around like so if you want to take some selfies or like talk to it do a little bit of vlog type stuff on your hunt um, and it has a tremendous zoom it has 40 times optical zoom so that's pretty cool and it just seems to take good pictures and also good video so that's what I'm taking. I just have it in a little low pro case here. All right, turning around here, pivoting, if you will. We have what I'm gonna bring for optics. So this is a TNK bino harness. And in it, I have the six hour Kilo 3000 range finding binoculars that I'm gonna take. Um, I can input, I will, or I have all the input. Um, Ballistic data for my rifle is inputted into these, so when I range, it'll it'll give me a dial too. So I've taken those; they're 10 by 42s, and I can mount them to a tripod. I have one of these little spuds things that's really handy. And in the back, I will have um, currently have my wolf tag in there, but then there's a little built-in pocket here. I have my extra headlamp. It's a Petzl E light, super, man, super small, and it's nice for around camp or if you just need a light real quick. And then in the front here, in this little pocket, I have the Outdoorsman's tall bino post, so I can put my binoculars onto a tripod to glass, which is really nice. Really nice to be able to do that. So that's what I'm taking there. And then a lot of guys on a, on a hunt like this, the guide will have a spotting scope. So typically they don't pack their own, but I am gonna gonna pack my own because I want a spotter. So the Sig Oscar, the 80 millimeter spotting scope, it's angled. Taking that, that this is gonna be a lot of the weight portion in this pack, I can tell you. And then to go along with that, the outdoorsman's compact tripod with the outdoorsman's pan head. Um, I haven't had this tripod very long, but it it's seriously so nice to pack. And for sitting and some kneeling, like it's the perfect height. Been using this pan head since 2016, I would say, and still going strong. Really never had any issues with it, it's been great. So that's what I'm taking on the optics side. On the outfitter's gear list, they said bring two water bottles, so I'm just bringing a standard Nalgene with a Human Gear cap cap lid. It's just easier to um, drink out of it. It's a reducer, pretty much. So taking that, and then 
I might bring another standard Nalgene bottle or I might bring this little guy from Hydra Pack. It's just a collapsible water bottle. So you can have one liter of water there and then when you're not using it, it can just collapse down into really nothing and collapse into your pack. It's just an option. Not sure what I'm going to do yet. Bring in a Sea to Summit long spoon, long titanium spoon. Um, these things are money and you never know what you're going to get on an outfitter for an outfitter spoon. Um, the outfitter is going to pack the stove, so I really don't need to worry about that. But I am going to take this little cup for coffee or for whatever else, but mostly coffee. Um, it just has a little koozie that goes into the outside of it. It's just a GSI cup, I believe. And uh, so you can have some measuring devices, measuring device as well. And it's just a nice, super lightweight cup with a little sippy lid. It'll be nice to have for the mornings. And then the outfitter is packing all the food. And a lot of guys, I keep going back and forth with, with guys that'll be like, yeah, for our backpack hunt, the outfitter packed all the food and it was great. And then some guys will be like, the outfitter packed the food and I... Gave, he gave me way too much or he didn't give me enough or whatever. So some guys are telling me like, hey, completely pack all your own food. Um, some guys are telling me just bring some of the, your own snacks that you like. So I've talked to my outfitter enough. That's really important to do, I think. Talk to your outfitter, talk to your guide. Um, you know, food is kind of a big deal when it comes down to it because it could make your hunt miserable if you don't have enough or whatever. So I chose, I feel really good about what the outfitter is going to pack. Um, we're going to do like the standard mountain house, like salami and cheese, things like that. But I also know like there's certain stuff that I like and I geek out on this stuff a little bit. So here's kind of a lineup of some of the things that I'm going to take and I'm just going to mix and match and swap out for some of the stuff that he's packed for me. So just simple candy bars like Snickers, peanut butter is a big one that I like, or Reese's Take Five. Um, I'm a peanut butter fan, so I go crazy for those. Uh, Nature's Bakery Fig Bars. These things are bomb, and they're like 50 cents a piece at a Winco, if you have a Winco. Walmart also has them. You can buy them by the box, and they're really awesome. Um, the peach apricot's super good. And then just these Cliff Nut Butter Filled Bars are basically peanut butter filled cliff bars. I really like those. Huge fan of these two from Kate's Real Food. Uh, the peanut butter dark chocolate. I think she calls it the grizzly bar. These are super, super good. Um, Quest bars, or Quest is making peanut butter cups now and they're super good. Um, high in fat, high in protein, low in sugar, um, but these are super good. And then these little guys from Western Smokehouse, they have different flavored little sticks. A lot of times when you're taking jerky and things like that, your calories per ounce don't really add up um, as well. But this little guy is one ounce and it's 120 calories. So typically on a Western hunt, I'll take two of these with like a cheese stick. And that'll be like one of my snacks or whatever. But I'm going to take a few of these with me. Um, big Sour Patch Kids fan, so I just have these little bags I got off Amazon that look like I'm dealing Sour Patch Kids, but they're really handy for divvying out little um, portions like this, or if you have like a big bat or um, like a big tub of electrolytes or something like that, and you want to divvy them into one serving packets, this is a really good way to do it. But these are Sour Patch Kids, and then. For more air fuel, I have the Elevate, more of like a an energy type drink mix. And then I have Liquid IV, which is a really good electrolyte drink mix. And then Black Rifle Coffee Company's um, coffee bag. I really like the taste of this. Or just their instant coffee is really good. So I'm just taking a few of those. Um, going to mix and match with what he's got and call it good. Uh, the outfitter, a lot of times, is going to supply your tent. He will supply mine if I wanted to. Um, but I've had this tent for a long time, and I really like it. It's the Hilleberg Neak. 
coming in a little over three pounds, a little more burly three season tent um, than a lot of other three season tents, but these things are just pretty much bomb proof and I love them very much. So I'm gonna bring my own tent. For a sleeping bag, I'm taking the Kafaru Slick 20 degree bag, it is a synthetic insulation. Now I've got it in a medium five string stuff sack. And for a pad, the Big Agnes Q-Core SLX. Um, been a super good pad for me. I've been using it for a long time. And then something a little extra on this trip that I normally wouldn't take with a floored tent is a bivy. This is a Bora bivy. It is like six ounces, nine ounces. It's pretty much weighs nothing. doesn't take up any room. And it can... If you need it, you're really going to need it because you're probably going to be away from your tent. It can add a little bit extra warmth, give your sleeping pad some protection, and yeah, it's just going to be really good. So I'm going to bring that, and then with all of this stuff, at least my pad bag, the bivy, some other things, I have a large, this is the medium, but I have a large first light dry bag that I'm going to take with me so I can stuff a bunch of stuff in there. But with that, um, the sheep tarp is also going to be like a rain cover. I can wrap everything up in it if I need to. Um, but that's pretty much it. And that's really not that much stuff. Most of the weight is going to come from the optics. And then, of course, the food. But I haven't weighed everything yet. As soon as I figure out how I'm going to pack and travel and do all that, I'll do... Hopefully two extra videos of actually packing my pack for this trip so you can see what that's going to look like and then packing my bag and everything for like airline travel so you can see how I'm going to roll with it that way. Um, as soon as I figure out exactly how I'm going to do all that, I'll shoot the videos. So hopefully you can be looking for those coming up.